Well, hey friends, today's a video I never thought I'd ever have to make. And today we're talking about balls. And this video is gonna be nuts. <laughs> Stainless steel balls that in theory make your coffee taste a lot better. I think this is really interesting. Now, before we get into this, let me explain what's going on. In 2021, Hugh Kelly, a barista championship competitor, took two metal stones and brewed the first 12 grams of his espresso over top of these chilled stones. He wanted to lock in the volatile aromatic compounds that are often lost in the oxidation process that happens especially at the beginning of our brew. In theory, this blanching effect would elevate some sweetness or complexity and produce a better cup of coffee by locking in those compounds that are otherwise lost. Today to do that, we're gonna take some whiskey stones and we're gonna brew over top of them to see what the results are. Now this idea was inspired by Dan on TikTok. He took two metal whiskey stones and he froze them and then he brewed over top of them rather than having them sit in a cup or freezing a cup itself to bring down the temperature out of extraction, locking in those volatile aromatic compounds. His experiences were good. So today I wanna to see if mine will be the same. Rather than just having this sit inside of a cup, I wanna ensure that the coffee is just passing by on top of the stone and then it's dripping into a cup. So inspired by Dan again is I'm using a sink strainer. What I'm doing here is putting the ball inside the sink strainer and I'm gonna brew on top of this frozen ball. With the sink strainer, you gotta ensure that your holes are large enough. What we don't wanna do here today is add another variable where we're dissipating crema or changing the body in our texture outside of the impact of the ball itself. We you don't want the strainer doing that. So make sure you have large enough holes here. You can use like a tea strainer or something made for something like this. Uh, but I found the tea strainers I have, the holes were a little too small. Okay, time to brew some espresso. Let's brew one with compound chilling, also known as chill extract theory or extraction chilling. Today we're gonna call it compound chilling and one without. Also, while I'm brewing this, do me a favor and hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps out a ton. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're almost at 100K. And give me your best ball joke down in the comments below. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we brew both espressos. Now this one is the one without the compound chilling and this one right here is the one with compound chilling. It has a little B for bowl on the bottom here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix these all up and dissipate the crema so I can't really tell the difference here. Crema does look slightly different on the one that's compound chilled. It was a little brighter. It didn't have as much deep color as the one that wasn't. Okay, I'm gonna have Natasha come in, swap these around and we're gonna do a blind testing. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put my hat over my head just because these cups are transparent. I can see where the B is, if not. I'm gonna try this one here first. Oh, that's nice. Interesting. That one's brighter. This one's got a lot more, uh, it, it's it's a lot brighter. It's just a lot more clarity to the cup profiles. Is, is this the B? It is. Okay, I want you to come try this. Let's have Natasha come and try this and see if she can tell the difference between these so it's not just my own opinion. <laughs> okay, take a guess, number one or two? Oh, two. Number two? Because you, you actually guessed it right. So you got number two was the, uh, the one that was compound chilled. So I could tell a big difference and we'll talk about this, but what was different for you? Could you tell the difference? Sweetness and clarity. More sweetness on this one. Yeah. Okay, interesting. I was incredibly skeptical coming into this, but uh, this is something you need to try, and here's why. This one was without the compound chilling. This one had compound chilling. Yes, I'm aware that my hat is inside out. Let's ignore it, move past it. Love you. Keep in mind, I did the exact same coffee, exact same recipe, exact same extraction, ratio, everything. This one tasted, like the same coffee, but elevated. Almost like if this one was just slightly off extraction and it wasn't perfectly dialed in and this one was, it was it was that level. So this one tasted good and it was dialed in, but this one just had that little 
extra. Now this was a semi wash Brazilian for an espresso. And so lots of hazelnuts and caramels and chocolates. And for me, that, that chocolate sweetness just popped on this one, where this one had a little more nuts to it. It was just a little bit more um, flat, where this one just really accentuated those, those sweet notes that you would get from caramels and chocolates. And I was super skeptical that I would be able to tell the difference. And this one was, was much better. Now this is a pretty cheap experiment. It's a simple whiskey stone, you throw it in the freezer and you brew with it. But I know where your mind's going. There are a million things that you already have to do when brewing espresso, especially in a home setting. And now you're just adding one more element to brewing coffee. Do I think that everybody should use this all the time? No, absolutely not. That's unrealistic. I do think, friends, that you should 100% try this. This, for me, just elevates flavor profiles in a way that many other attributes of brewing coffee can't. We talk about grinders a lot, we talk about water, and all those things are really important, and I would say this adds an extra element to brewing. Hate me, if you will, but I think this has a bigger impact than that law of diminishing returns of like a really good grinder to a really, really good grinder would have, personally. But in a practical sense, if you're a cafe, a cafe owner, should you use this? This might be really good if you're doing like a single origin bar. There is an item that's called the Paragon and it's essentially a whiskey stone, a stand that this sits in and it brews over. That looks really cool. This is a very affordable, you know, for me, this was like a $10 stone, a few hundred dollars for a brewer, as much as I respect the people behind it. It's just a really hard recommendation for me. Is this perfect? No. So I think we'll see innovation in this category very soon. I hope so at least. Now one other note, if you don't wanna buy a whiskey stone but you wanna try compound chilling, another alternative would be taking your portafilter without the basket and freezing this. As you can see this one here, it's frozen. And the results, like as shown here, they do work well depending on the mass of your portafilter. The problem with this though, ongoingly, is you're gonna to have to freeze your portafilter. I wouldn't recommend doing it if you have like a wooden handle. I'm just risky like that. The only problem is uh, you're gonna to have to be swapping baskets all the time. It's just not something you can do a ton of but it's an option if you don't want to, have to buy anything and yet another option would be to freeze your cups to help keep those volatile compounds within your espresso but i'm not a personal fan of doing this because i find drinking from a cold cup with a hot beverage a little strange but to each their own i much prefer brewing over top of something into the cup that i'll drink from let me know what your experiences are i want to hear back from you i'll be waiting for you in the comments if you haven't yet told me a ball joke in the comments down below Now's the time. And also hit that like button on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Love every single one of you guys. Have a wonderful day. Peace.